Today I want to talk to you potters about shrinkage. And no, it's not just something that happens to your ex-boyfriend when it gets cold outside. It's something that happens in our artwork all of the time. If you're a very, very new beginner, you might know that shrinkage happens but you probably don't know to what extent or where to find the numbers for your specific clay body and its shrinkage. And if you're an intermediate person, you're probably somewhere around the point where you're starting to think about doing commissions, a little bit of side work, maybe someone asked you to make a string of cups, and you need to know the shrinkage of your clay and you need to know how they shrink as well. It's actually a bit funny because in potter culture, we always just said like, make it bigger to beginners instead of explaining what shrinkage is to them. Like when you're in a class and somebody makes a mug and they go, that's a good size. There's always one teacher who's like, you should make it, you should make it a little bit bigger. Just trust me, just make, make it a little bit bigger. Because we know whatever you're making, the entire body of that is gonna shrink at least 10%. And you're gonna be like, wow, that's, has turned into a teacup with a handle, thanks. Knowing the shrinkage of your specific clay body is actually really important for not only the work you do now, so you can get used to it, but the work that you're gonna do later if a company comes up to you and says, hey, I'm gonna pay you to make 50 of this mug. I actually did that quite recently. I had to weigh out my clay, I had to figure out the height, the width, but the number one thing I had to know was how much shrinkage my clay was gonna go through all the way through the process. And the shrinkage doesn't happen all at once. It happens step by step through the process. When you make your stuff and there's water in it, when you're freshly thrown greenware, there's no shrinkage there, really. It's kind of just wet work. But when it dries out into the bone dry greenware, there's shrinkage there. When you put it in the kiln to go through your bisqueware, there's shrinkage there. And when you finally get to your glazed final product, it has shrunk as much as it can, as long as you fire it to its proper temperature. Okay, well great Dante, now you told me that my clay shrinks, but now the commission that I was doing, I have to worry about being a little bit too small, and I don't know the shrinkage rate of my clay. You just made me worry for nothing. All right, calm down though, we'll go over it. Every clay isn't just clay that you dig up out of the ground. We, as crafters, are actually fairly spoiled. Most of us don't work with what we consider to be wild clay. We don't dig it straight out of the ground, fire it, there's certain chemicals added to it to make it shrink or mature or have a certain amount of vitrification at a certain level. These are all recipes that other clay companies kind of mix together, take the air out, pug it, send it back to us, so it's easy, nice, and workable clay. But because of all those things they put in it, they technically shrink at different rates. For example, one of my favorite clay bodies is called redstone. I've been using it quite a bit recently. In my last commission, I had to do a lot of redstone clay with it. This clay has a certain shrinkage percentage, and this shrinkage percentage is different from other clay bodies. I know that because I can very easily go to the clay manufacturer's website, look up my specific clay, I think it's called WC-420. I can look at the details of that specific clay from the company website and somewhere near the bottom, it'll usually say the shrinkage rate. Some companies even put the shrinkage rate from the bisqueware to the fully finished product of the glazeware. And that's, that's really special. That's going above and beyond. But for your specific clay type, if you're using a clay that's usually from a manufacturer, it's not from like, Uncle Jimmy's backyard, you can probably find the shrinkage rate, the absorption rate, and a lot more information on the company website. So that will be your specific shrinkage rate. The only reason I really started to learn about shrinkage in clay is because I remember in class, I made like a two foot tall pot, right? It was it was a pretty much a toddler in size. And I put it in the kiln, I bisked it, and it got a little smaller, but that was to be expected. And then I glazed it, it came out, and it, it was smaller than I'd like. For a second, I was like, where's, mine, someone copied my work, mm, that's not me. But it was mine, it just so happens that the two foot tall vase I was trying to make was pretty much just pure porcelain and it shrinks a little bit more than a lot of stoneware does. There's a couple tools that can help you with your shrinkage rate, especially if you're making a large amount of stuff. And there's a couple of things you need to know about shrinkage. You see me, I'm not too smart. I'm not too great at math. So when you tell me something like my pot's gonna shrink, I go, oh, okay, well, how many inches will it lose in height? That's not how this works. When we're talking about shrinkage and clay, we're really talking about the entire product. It doesn't just get smaller and like shrink down a tiny bit. The entire pot shrinks. This sometimes means that if you're making one of those super fancy vases with the super small bottlenecks and you make the hole super, super small, well, there's a small chance that hole might close up, it might even fuse in with the glaze and just make an airtight pocket. This also means if you're making something like a teapot or a lidded jar and you make the teapot, let it bisque dry, put it in the bisque, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I'll just make a different lid for it later. Or I'll just make the lid at a later time when it's dry and you've measured it out with a regular ruler. 
it's not really gonna work that much. It's not airtight anymore. Technically speaking, the first part of the pot that you threw has shrunk just due to air drying. Or if you put it in the bisque and let it come out and then decide to make another lid, it doesn't really work that way. Those things have already shrunk and the measurements that you're gonna take for the lid are now inaccurate. The neat thing is that potters have come up with two nifty little tools that really help us with our own shrinkage rate. Number one, the shrinkage ruler. The shrinkage ruler does exactly what it sounds like. You get a ruler that correlates to the shrinkage of your pot, considering you've already looked it up. And then once you measure the pot after you've thrown it, it'll have little notches on there, like a real ruler, and it'll show you. It'll probably shrink to this height or this width, and you're done. Most of the time, it's fairly accurate. The other tool that I prefer way more is called a throwing gauge. You've probably seen a throwing gauge before on Instagram posts, Posts on YouTube potters. Well, yeah, I mean you're here, so I I assume you're cheat. I assume you're cheating on me. Like I assume you watch other potters. It's cool. We're not monogamous. It's fine. You've probably seen a throwing gauge somewhere in Instagram or YouTube or Twitter and thought to yourself, I don't know what that is. It must be a tool to help them with their pottery. It's pretty much the same exact thing as a shrinkage ruler. The difference is that it helps us pre-measure all of our stuff. If you see one of these next to a potter's wheel, it is almost guaranteed that they are some sort of production potter. That's not to say that they only make production work, don't get me wrong, but that is to say that they most likely make tons and tons of the same cups or bowls or like salt shakers or certain little things that they need to pre-measure for the sake of consistency. A throwing gauge is pretty much just a little stand that you put next to your wheel and it acts kind of like a preset ruler. One of them hangs like this, the other one hangs like this, and you, this, I mean, I don't have two arms over here, but it, it looks like that. And when you throw your pot, you just throw it to a specific height, which is already preset for you, and a specific width, which is already preset to you because of the throwing gauge. And all of your pots, as long as they're the same clay body, will usually come out fairly uniform, considering you're making the same shape over and over again. If you see a potter with one of these next to their wheel, they probably have shelves and shelves full of the same teacup, the same bowl, the same mug, the same pot, over and over and over again. It's kind of like throwing calipers a little bit, but instead of measuring things like lids, it just measures while you're throwing. That way you can have much more consistent work. The reason I like throwing gauges a little bit more is because you don't need a shrinkage ruler. Here's what's gonna happen to you. You're gonna go through the gambit of clays you wanna use and experiment with, and then you're gonna slowly start to funnel them down into like four or five clays, much like myself, that you like to work with. Stuff that feels good, works with your glazes. You can make marbleized clay out of them, maybe you like to sculpt with them. You figure out what you like for yourself. You're gonna figure out one day, clay shrinks. You're gonna figure out the percentage when you go to the website and look at it, and after that, you're gonna stop measuring because you know what size you like your stuff you'll probably get somewhere around the accurate size every time, but once you start doing production work and really selling your stuff, you'll end up measuring your clay. You might go online, find yourself a scale, go, okay, 1.5 pounds for this mug, two pounds for this mug, it's kind of a lot actually, two pounds for a mug. After the weight of your pot, you care about the consistency and size of your pot, especially if you're making something for production. I know that I'm pounding that in pretty hard, the whole, production facet of this, but it really is a productionist's tool for consistency. And I honestly just went through a commission where someone asked me to make like 30 of the same cup and I measured them all with my bare hands. <laughs> I didn't have a throwing gauge. I didn't have a shrinkage ruler. I had a regular ruler. I had to do a little bit of math on the side. And it just so happens that afterwards they were like, mm, we want it a little bit smaller. So guess who had to make the entire commission over again? I'll give you one guess. Yep. It was me, yeah. If you guessed correctly, hit the like button, just to let me know that you got it correct. Imagine somebody got it wrong and hit the dislike button, like, oh, I thought it was, I got, I thought it was the guy behind, I thought it was Mega Man. I thought Mega Man Don't got be it wrong. Rude. Sorry, I gotta, gotta hit the dislike now. If you're wondering where you can get these two items, because it's not like Google's gonna advertise to you, or it's not like Instagram's gonna push them to you without you looking for them first, I will link these two down below in the description of this video. I will say though, I'm gonna reiterate what I said before. Unless you're working with a bunch of different clay bodies, a shrinkage ruler is good to start learning the shrinkage of your specific clay body once you've looked up the numbers. But once you get comfortable with the size of the stuff that you wanna make for not only you, but your customers, you end up going with the throwing gauge because you're like, well, I, I kind of already know the height and the width that I want to throw to. And as long as I set these two to those parameters, I'm kind of good. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. You know, I know that this was kind of a shorter video, but a lot of people message me almost every single day on Instagram and they ask me these very basic questions and I don't mind helping them out. But a common one that I get is like, hey, I made a cup and it shrank 
I expected it would shrink because of the heat and the shrinkage rate and everything, but now I use a different clay and it's like way smaller than the last one. I moved up to porcelain, what happened? Every clay has a different shrinkage rate and a different shrinkage percentage. They all are different. And because of that, you're gonna have to measure your stuff a little bit differently every single time that you decide to change your clay body. The numbers are online, usually with the manufacturer, and that's part of the information I wanted to give you today. Or you're doing a bit of production work and you're making like 10 mugs for a store that asked for it and they're gonna pay you or consignment or something like that. These two tools, the shrinkage ruler and the gauge, are just money makers as far as that's concerned. It just really measures everything out for you. And at least if you didn't get the shrinkage right, you did have consistency. And consistency always looks beautiful when you're talking to a commission customer. When I was like a baby potter, I was thankful for any work that came my way. So people would be like, oh yeah, can you make 10 of these mugs? And I'd be like, oh yeah, sure. I can totally do it. So I'm sitting over here on the wheels, slaving away with a regular ruler. And I didn't know that this clay body and this clay body have different shrinkage rates. I just thought all clay shrank the same. It was like my first year. And I was just, you know, I said yes, even though I didn't have the experience and the knowledge. I was like, oh yeah, I'm grateful for anyone to ask me for work. Uh. But now I'm a bit more experienced. So I know on a professional level how to get that consistency and a few tools that can help out with that. So thank you, Dirty Potters, for watching today. If any of this information helped you out, remember to click the like button. Santa Claus likes to come down my chimney, and every single time you click the like button, he goes back up a little bit. He's not welcome in my home. He's just like a little, little bit goes back up there. I realize I just said Santa Claus comes down my chimney. I have to go now.